Mr. Ronsbert. Thank you. We're recording. You're on, Larry. Okay. Larry, only done you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, here, let me. I have three things going. So. Just make sure you keep the, the main one, the laptop, uh, unmuted. So I'm Larry Cleos. I'm from Highland Park, New Jersey. I'm a past president of the men's club at the Highland Park Conservative Temple Congregation on Chiemet. Uh, I'm also a member of the Northern New Jersey region and I'm on the, the Board of Trustees. I'm currently Communications Vice President uh, for uh, Northern New Jersey Region. And uh, I don't know, what else do you want to know from me? Uh, I'm, gonna make, I'm gonna make uh, chili verde. And when I get to it, can... Um, explain a little about how I got to uh, this recipe in making chili verde. Um, but uh, let me go ahead and get uh, started here. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil into a pot. Don't need a whole lot, just basically enough to cover the pan. Um, If you, I don't know if you can uh, switch back and forth between my various screens, like on, on uh, the phone right now, I'm showing oil heating in a pan, which isn't all that exciting. But I have... Um, the camera's a little too high, so we can't really see the food. Yeah, hang on. Uh, well, let me move the iPad over here. Um, so I'll show you, um, I have already pre-cut onions, poblano peppers, uh, bell peppers, jalapeno peppers. I've diced uh, or minced some garlic. So that's all ready to go. I'm going to start sauteing that. There you go. All right, so that's sauteing. Um, why don't you, can you switch the gallery view to the, or from the, uh, switch to um, my laptop? Can you switch the video? The, the one that I'm waving my hand in. There we go. Okay. Well, that works. Um, so anyway, our club year for several years, we ran chili cook-offs and I entered the chili cook-off. I did you know, my traditional red chili, it was very spicy, uh, what I liked. And uh, I was shocked, uh, utterly shocked that I came in third place. So I decided I, I needed to change it up a bit. And I noticed that the two chilies that beat me out uh, were more mild in nature. So I figured, well, I need to do something less spicy and I wanted to do something different uh, just so mine would stand out. So I researched chili recipes for on the internet for chili verde. And of course, if you look for chili verde, the recipes all, uh, virtually all of them have pork in them, which obviously I couldn't do. So I did it with uh, boneless chicken breast. 
uh, fresh tomatillos and um, you know all the other stuff in there. And it worked out very well and I won for a couple of years in a row uh, to the point that they didn't want to have a competition anymore. We just did it for fun. And I've done it also not only for chili cook-offs, but for uh, Super Bowl parties, um, assorted other events at the temple. And, um, you know, it's, it's always been a big hit. So that's what I'm doing tonight. Now, I've published two different recipes. Let me give this stuff a stir for I've published two different recipes. Uh, one is the uh, version that I first came up with that takes honestly two and a half to three hours uh, from start to finish. And that's with the boneless chicken breast, fresh tomatillos. There's a lot of work to do with all of that. Uh, but I've now developed a quicker version, which is what I'm doing tonight, um, which Instead of the boneless chicken breast, it uses ground turkey, and you can use ground chicken, whatever. What uh, kind of heat are you using right now? What type of heat? Uh, to which heat are you talking about? Are you talking about my stove, or are you talking about the spice? Hold on, I'm looking at the chat. Let's see. Uh, the, oh, the stove. stove. OK, that's gas heat. I have a gas stove. Uh, oh, but um, you're probably, I'm talking like medium heat. Uh, I understand what you're saying now. Uh, you know, it's on, it's on a medium flame. Um, you know, you don't want to burn the onions and peppers, et cetera, but you know, you don't want it to take forever either. And the, um, so anyway, you can, you know, as I said, you can substitute ground turkey, ground chicken, whatever, uh, which is, uh, I'm doing ground turkey tonight. And instead of messing with the fresh tomatillos, which frankly are a lot of work, you can use a to tomatillo salsa. And I found uh, two tomatillo salsas that are, and there may be others out there, uh, but the, Late July brand and the Goya brand. They're both uh, hectured and kosher. So, and you know, you have to see what's available in your area. Um, all right, if you can add, um, the iPhone, you can see the, the peppers and onions uh, sauteing. I'm not sure who's controlling uh, uh, the video. Can we do like a, the split screen like we had before? Is that going to be a problem? Here, let's do it this way. There's the peppers and onions. They're sauteing in the oil. You let them go for like about 10 minutes or so. Uh, I might go a little early right now. Just to try and speed things up. And I'm doing two pounds of ground turkey uh, tonight. I think the recipe said one and a half pounds. The Empire ground turkey is generally available in one pound packages. So.
And I'll show you. I've added the ground turkey in there. Um, we'll keep sauteing that. And obviously, if you do boneless chicken breast, you would have it cut up in you know small pieces uh, so that it can saute and cook through. Uh, even though the ground turkey, it doesn't have to cook all the way through at this point of the process, because once we add in the other ingredients and it's simmering, it will certainly finish cooking. Any questions so far? Advantages of turkey versus chicken. It's, I guess, a preference, you know, when I, <laughs> I've done it with both and it pretty much comes out the same. So while, while that's cooking, I could tell you a co couple interesting facts about Highland Park, New Jersey. Uh, Highland Park was, is actually the birthplace of the Band-Aid. It was invented here in Highland Park uh, by a Johnson & Johnson in, uh, employee. And um, another interesting Highland Park fact is we used to be the home uh, for Arno Penzias, who uh, won the Nobel Prize uh, for his work on the Big Bang Theory, not the TV show, but the physics uh, theory uh, while he was uh, at Bell Labs. Any, I don't see any other questions out there yet. Uh, I welcome any and all questions. Need something to fill in the time here. Yeah. All right, Larry, it's Eric, um, also in New Jersey with a lot of snow. Larry, where's your toke? My, my toke? The chef's hat. Oh. <clears throat> Will this do? M much better, much better. Outstanding. I guess it's not technically a chef's hat, but you'll have to do. It's actually a paper uh, garlic clove, which I picked up at a um, garlic festival like a little over a year ago. I never met a garlic clove I didn't like. All right, can you lower the camera a little bit so we can see what's going on? Um, well, that's which camera? <laughs> the one you're using right now is fine. Okay, well, that um, there you go. All right, I mean, there's not it, it kind of have to you know look in the pot. You see, the, the ground turkey is browning. the peppers and onions are sauteing. We're almost to the point that we could start adding some other ingredients. So Larry, there's a couple of questions. Instead of breasts, 
You can do that. Okay. Is and is there an advantage to saute the meat separately before adding the vegetables? Um, not that I know of. I mean, it's a matter of personal uh, preference. Um, I always, I always like to minimize the number of pots that I use if possible. But it, you know, you could brown the the meat in a in a skillet, let's say, and then you know, add it to the vegetables later. Uh, I've just always done it this way. And then somebody just asked, did you ever try to use stew beef since pork is in the original recipe? Uh, well, not for this, uh, not for this chili. I've done it for red uh, chilies. I've made it with stew beef, you know, in addition or instead of ground beef. Uh, and in fact, I think the year I came in third place, I think I probably made it with stew beef. So, but I wouldn't, I don't, I wouldn't tend to use beef in this recipe because it's typically like a, a white meat and, you know, it takes on a green color, which is why it's called chili verde. Chili verde literally translated as green chili. We have a question from somebody from Cincinnati. In Cincinnati, they think chili is something you serve over spaghetti. By the way, do you want to rent? Do you want? Do you want the fat to, that renders from the meat? If not, do the, does the meat? Do, do, if not, do the meat first and skim off the fat? Um, well, with the ground turkey or boneless chicken breasts, um, I find there's really not a lot of extra fat added. Um, so I just leave it all in there. You know, there's basically a little bit of um, oil that I, you know, use. You can you can see from this bottle there's of olive oil. There's not a whole lot was is missing from it. So I didn't put a whole yeah. lot into it. Yeah, and, Tom's doing a great job answering the questions. Keep the <laughs> and, uh, and as far as far oh, as great. serving it over spaghetti, I mean, I would I typically pr prefer serving my chili over rice, and in particular, I like brown rice. Um, but I have had it over pasta when we've had it um, when we've had the chili cook-offs. Sometimes we made brown rice. For people to have their chili on. Sometimes we've made uh, regular rice. Sometimes we've made, uh, you know, some form of pasta. So it just varies. It, it really goes, you know, with whatever you, you want to do. So uh, just like maybe a little more about my background as far as how did I, you know, get in, in you know, to cooking so much. Um, my mother of blessed memory, Olive Cleos, was, uh, I grew up in, uh, at Temple Bethel in Richmond, Virginia. And my mother uh, was very active in sisterhood there and she pretty much ran the kitchen. And, you know, for her, it didn't, uh, it didn't matter if she was cooking for two or 200, uh, everything was always good. So I've kind of followed in her footsteps, except it's with men's club instead of sisterhood for obvious reasons. Right over hot, crispy French fries too. Yeah, getting me hungry, I just finished dinner. I've never had chili over uh, hot, crispy French fries, but um, I spent some time uh, living in uh, in Baltimore, and it's popular in Baltimore to put gravy on French fries. It kind of threw me for a loop when I'd get French fries and somebody would ask if I wanted gravy on it. 
And of course, if you talk to Italian anywhere else uh, and you say gravy, it has a totally different meaning. Larry in New Jersey at Rutz Hut, they serve uh, French fries with gravy in Do Clifton. That. Yeah, Clifton. Okay. Is that, uh, that sounded like Eric Weiss. Yeah, that's kind of like Eric Weiss. No, I mean, the, the voice sounds like Eric Weiss. Is that? <laughs> it is. It's, okay. it is. It is I, Larry. I can't, I can't tell a lie. Very good. You can't disguise your voice, Eric. All right. Okay, let me just. All right, so at this point, I'm going to add uh, one of the jars of uh, tomatillo salsa. I'm gonna do the Goya one. But as I said, either one would work fine. And another little thing from my mother. You know, always rinse out the jar and toss that in too. Don't want to let anything go to waste. How many ounces did you just add? Uh, I'll tell you in a second. I'll just show you. I'm just, the tomatillo salsa went in, stirring it in. That jar was 17.6 ounces. The late July salsa, is 15.5 ounces, so not a lot of difference. And if you're making a bigger batch, you could just put in both jars. And the fact that it's tomatillo salsa doesn't take as long to cook either. I'm also going to add in a small can of diced green chilies. Uh, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Uh, it's something I usually do unless, uh, like the last time I made it, I couldn't find them at the store at the time and I went without it and it was fun. Again, rinse out the, the can. I don't want to miss any. All right. Uh, I think now is when we're supposed to add the um, okay, so now I'll add cilantro. So I, I had, I actually had a rather large bunch of cilantro. So I only, I chopped half of it. Uh, and I'm, I've divided it into, divided the half bunch into halves. So each one of these piles is about a quarter of a bunch. But you know, something, a measurement like a bunch is kind of subjective because sometimes the bunches are huge, sometimes they're small. You just kind of have to use your judgment. If you ever can't find fresh cilantro, you can use uh, dried cilantro, but try and do uh, fresh if you can. So I'm gonna be, um, chop cilantro at this point so it will cook in. 
The other half goes in near the end. And now I think we do the seasonings, right? Uh, no, let me do some chicken broth. And again, you could use uh, vegetable broth, um, you know, whatever. It's I just always liked using chicken broth for this because it kind of goes it goes back to when I started doing with the recipe with boneless chicken breasts. The chicken broth seemed to make the most sense. Yet, what's going on with, with that? Basically, bring that to a boil and let it simmer away. All right, now we start adding some of the seasonings. is oregano. You can see how meticulous I am with measuring. Ground cumin. Salt and pepper. I throw in a little red Tabasco because that's what I have. If you have the green Tabasco, that works a little better, but the, you're not putting in that much. So it's not really changing the color of the, of the chili. And uh, the green Tabasco is a little more mild than the red. Again, there's all the seasonings. I'm going to stir them in. It's going to simmer away. And I'm going to add in some white cannellini beans. Drain them. Drain 
some more. And here, let's do it this way. Um, there was a, a comment, I believe the green is habanero sauce. I, I don't think that's true. Uh, because uh, if it was habanero, it would be a lot spicier than the normal red Tabasco. Um, there might be brands of hot sauce, green hot sauce that are habanero, um, but not, um, not the Tabasco green. Yeah, and there was a there, there's a comment he put in five turns of salt after about ten to fifteen of pepper, and that's just a function of what was coming out. <laughs> the pepper grinder wasn't putting out a lot of pepper, so that's why it seemed like it was more. Yeah, okay. And to help with the flavor, some vinegar. Again, you can see how meticulous I am with measuring. All right, I turned up the heat a little bit just to get it going. But again, there's, there's what we have so far. Yeah, somebody put on there, uh, green Tabasco is jalapeno. I think that is correct. Are there any other questions out there? Larry, I have a question. I'll just put it in the chat. Okay. Uh, do you ever thicken or just let the cooking boil down the liquids? Uh, well, that's like a perfect question because I'm getting ready to start the thickening process. Uh, I use masa flour, which is a very fine corn flour. And uh, I'll take some of that. You can see uh, you can see how fine it is. I take some of that and I'll mix it with cold water to form kind of a paste, but it has to be thin enough that you can pour it in.
and I'm using the whisk to get it all mixed up. All right, so you can see, you know, the consistency. It's kind of a thin paste. We're going to add that to the chili and let it cook in. That will help it um, uh, thicken up. So. Here it is right now, and now let's add some of it in. And I'll stir it in, and that's going to thicken up the chili uh, as it cooks. Now, if you, as you're cooking, if you decide it's not thick enough, you can always add more. Uh, if you decide it's too thin, you can add, I mean, too thick, you can add some water or more chicken broth, uh, you know, just to thin it down a little. And a lot is uh, personal preference. Any other questions here? Do I use the masa flour when I make chili with beef? Yes, I do. And how many, how much beans were in the can? That was a 15 and an ounce, 15 and a half ounce can. Uh, Could you stick them with anything else? And uh, okay, so you could probably thicken it with cornstarch or potato starch, um, you know, any sort of thickening agent like that. Can you get the masa flour used in smaller containers? I haven't seen it in a smaller container, unfortunately. Although this big bag was only like, uh, I think two and a half, three dollars, something like that. Um, and I then take it and um, seal it up in a like a freezer Ziploc and freeze it. And it keeps pretty well that way. And okay, the limes. Um, for the lime juice, uh, and I, I mean, I prefer fresh lime juice, but you can always use the bottled lime juice, just not sweetened. Um, you don't, you know, you're not making a mixed drink here. Um, but, you know, the lime juice goes in pretty much at the end when we put in the last, uh, the rest of the chopped cilantro. And if I use a slow cooker, what is the cook time, high or low? I don't know, I've never done this recipe in a slow cooker. Um, the, doing it in a slow cooker, you, you might, I don't know if you would want to uh, brown the meat separately and put it in, um, or if it will, it will probably, I will certainly cook uh, in a slow cooker, whether you brown it or not. Um, so I've never done it. A lot of you could do. A lot of people do do chili in slow cookers, um, and whether it's a high or low setting, I think depends on how long you're cooking it. 
And okay, I see masa is gluten free. What is it made of? It's actually a corn flour, it's just ground up corn. Um, not the money, small Cambridge. I'm not sure what that means. Oh, okay. Size of the flower bag. I understand. Okay. All right. Well, it's simmering away. Are you boiling it or are you simmering right now? Well, I'm kind of doing it a little faster to try and get it moving along. So it's kind of boiling as you can see. Um, normally I would simmer it and let it go for a longer period of time. Right now I'm gonna give it a taste just to see how, if I need to adjust the seasonings at all. Add in a little more cumin. Okay, I think that's going to do. Um, so, again, I'm, I'm kind of speeding things along here, uh, but I certainly want to show you everything. I'm cutting the limes in half. Uh, my citrus squeezer. Things are really neat contraptions. And certainly better than the way I used to have to do it by hand. The combination of the lime juice and the vinegar, you know, adds uh, an acidic balance to it. Gives it kind of the chili kind of a tang, which you know balances with the heat. And there's not a lot of heat in this one. I don't know if you noticed, it was, uh, it was heavier on the uh, poblano peppers than I was on the jalapeno peppers. And that was a pretty big line, so I think I'm going to leave it at one line. Put in the rest of the cilantro.
and turn it off. So by adding the cilantro at the end, you know, the cilantro at the end, it's, it retains its bright green color. And that's what it looks like. And have to sample some. And that's it. Oh, and, and one finishing touch. My IKC glass and tequila since we're doing chili. I can get the tap off. There we go. Oh. Need the line. Behind. Okay, let's let me see, get caught up on the questions here. Lime, cornmeal, are you sure you? Okay, it's not. I don't think it's considered a lime cornmeal. It's a, it's a corn flour. Um, estimate cilantro. <laughs> I just have to look at it visually. I, I do things by sight and taste and um, capable of doing the tequila part. Yes. All right, so both recipes were sent out, I believe, um, with, with the link. Um, if you need, if you didn't get it, you sent it twice, uh, contact me and uh, Danny, and uh, I'll be happy to resend it to you. Yeah, when are we having a chili cook-off? Oh we, yeah, well, <laughs> we, we, you know, uh, Northern New Jersey region was going to do a regional chili cook off, but then COVID got in the way. I'll, I'll throw out there, uh, maybe when we finally get to have an in person convention, maybe we can have a chili cook off. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so, Danny, I'm throwing that into your. Yeah, yeah, we well, definitely. Uh, listen. Larry, for the for the for the for our region, New Jersey region, maybe we can do something that's socially socially distanced in a parking lot in good weather. Um, maybe we'll you know we'll see. Tar David Glasses wants to do that, so. All right. Well, I'll, I I vote yes too. 
It's actually, it's something we, that we, we're talking about here in New England and all the regions could talk about. If you can pull it off um, and, and you have enough guys that are comfortable doing it, it actually would be, it would be great, certainly towards the end of the summer or perhaps in the early, uh, in the early fall. Well, and as far as New Jersey is concerned, I have a portable fire pit. So we can set it up in a parking lot somewhere and even keep warm. Andy Simon is, is a foodie and he has all sorts of portable stuff. So um, there, we have resources in New Jersey. I'll stop talking about New Jersey. <laughs> That's okay. I grew up in New Jersey. I don't Jersey. know if, if everybody noticed, anybody noticed I'm wearing a Northern New Jersey region shirt. We did. We did. All right, Larry. So uh, do, can we see the final product up close? All right. Looks like green chili to me. Yep. It's green. It's chili. It's chili verde. How is it? It, look, it looks great. Well, I have to be honest. The fact that I didn't cook it for two hours doesn't seem to matter a whole lot. So the only thing I would have done is I might it would have ended up getting a little thicker. All right. Well, thank you. So Larry is a volunteer, is an FJMC member. Obviously, if you haven't figured that out, he's from the northern New Jersey region. Uh, and we thank you very, very, very much. Uh, so just a couple of, uh, a few things that I, I wanted to review with the group. First of all, thank you everyone for attending another cooking webinar. Um, these are all volunteer uh, driven. So if you're actually interested in leading one, we're always looking for people to, this is Larry's second. So Yoshikawach to you twice. If you were in our, we've been doing these since March actually. And Larry was one of the first cooking chefs. Um, and he did something that probably no one else had to encounter is that he lost power because of a storm right before he was supposed to go on air and he persevered and he was able to walk us through it and he did a great job. So this time he had power and he's enjoying the fruit of, fruits of his labor. So thank you very much for that. Um, we did put up on the chat about the donations. If you'd like to give a donation to FJFC, it would be wonderful. Uh, just some important, uh, some important dates on March 9th, which is a Tuesday, that's our next scheduled cooking webinar. And uh, we're very excited to, uh, it's gonna be on Passover. And uh, Tom, do you wanna talk a little bit about it? Sure. Uh, Murray Berkowitz, who is a dentist by training, but a cook by, by avocation, has been running weekly cooking classes since COVID began online for a synagogue. Uh, he's a great cook. I've had his food many times and he's gonna cook, cook for Passover for us. He and a team of his, of his friends. So it'll be a lot of fun. He's on YouTube and does this and it's really, he's a great cook and you're gonna, you're gonna see some really interesting recipes. So looking forward to it. He's so also again, Tuesday, March 9th. So note that now and we'll send out the regular uh, you can always follow us on the uh, Google Drive. You can follow us on the FJMC calendar. And if you're not in FJMC, but just by you attending this, you'll be on our email mailing list. So um, we, uh, we have other affinity groups too. We have a uh, genealogy. We have a finance group. We have a Yiddish group. And we have a sports affinity group. And we have three sports events coming up in the next month. So uh, Mr. Kravitz and I, uh, so we'll be actually two days before the cooking one, uh, we have Tamir Goodman, uh, who has been called the Jewish Michael Jordan, live from Israel. So that should be really, really exciting. Uh, but we have one actually closer, which is on uh, March 10th, Mark Heinhorn, who is the president of uh, Maccabee, uh, USA. So, so check your calendar. Stay with us. We thank you very much. If anyone's any final questions for Larry, um, all right, everyone. So, thank you very much. 
Uh, have a good night and enjoy that chili. And who? Will. And uh, I don't really care who wins. So go either team. <laughs> go football. Go football, right? All right. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night, Larry. Thank night. you very much. Thank Danny, you, Larry. Thank you. Thank, Danny, thank you for organizing. We appreciate it. And and Great. to uh, and to Dave Kravitz for helping put it together together as well. <laughs> thank you, thank night, you Larry. Lila Tove. Lila Tove. Good night, everyone. Good night, all.